The rear of any overlanding vehicle is the hub. It's the centre of the overnight stops. It's the kitchen. It's the storeroom. It's the garage. And it's the editing studio. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I designed the rear of my cargo area to suit all the gear I need for my family when out on the road. G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the entire setup in the rear cargo area of my Land Cruiser and how everything integrates together. Now the original system was put in about two years ago, however it's been modified and added upon over the last couple of years and is almost complete. So let's go right back to the beginning and we'll go through the whole system. So the first port of call for me was to get rid of those third row seats. Only having two children and rarely needing to carry any more passengers, it just wasn't something that I needed. Now having this huge cargo area is just like having a big blank canvas. So I contacted Chris from Custom Installations in Wangara in Western Australia, and he made up for me a single drawer fridge and table slide system for the back of the cruiser. Now there are a few key points as to why I got Custom Installations involved to build the custom storage solution in the back of the cruiser. The first one was, I like the fact that the fridge is done nice and low. I didn't want a twin side-by-side -side drawer system, and I didn't want the lost weight and space that comes along with a fridge drop-down slide. The second reason, I wanted the system to be easily interchangeable and universal. I wanted to be able to suit many different requirements as we move and grow as a family, and also for different requirements for household needs and for touring needs. So in this case, it means that this fridge box here is easily removed with four clips down the base, and a false floor can be inserted in here, leaving a huge space in the back. It's not a dedicated touring system, however, as you can see, it can be built up to be such as well. Now the third reason I like this system is the integrated table into the slide underneath the fridge. Now when I first had the system built I wasn't sure whether my whole setup would fit onto this table but I can honestly say now that I don't actually bother carrying around folding tables when I go camping. I just don't need them. Having the convenience of a table that slides out from underneath the fridge has been one of the biggest selling points of these drawers and something I use multiple times every single day when we're out on the road. And lastly, I wanted a system that was built to a high standard. Custom installation setup comes with a good name and at great quality. Now, if you weren't already considering a system from custom installations, perhaps the fact that they can build anything for you may change your mind. Whether it be in the back of a wagon like here, the second row seats in a trailer or a canopy, you name it and they can build it. Now, there is a lengthy wait for some of their work, but I don't consider this a put off, but a testimony to the quality and the good work that comes out of this workshop. So this is probably the time to mention that I'm not endorsed or sponsored by custom installations and I paid full retail price for the system in my vehicle. The products that are created and the passion that Chris has for his work is probably one of the most impressive products and business models that I've had involved in the build of my Land Cruiser 200 series and hence why this is gonna be a positive review. Now, like I mentioned at the start of my video, having the fridge down low was a very important part of my setup, but also the fact that the custom installation systems take into account the width of your fridge. So before I ordered and purchased this system, I went and changed from a 60 litre Engel fridge to a 65 litre Waco CFX. Now the reason I did that is because these fridges here are slightly higher capacity, but they also have a taller dimension and a narrower footprint on the width side, which means when Chris went to build my set of drawers, he could build this section here a little narrower, leaving a little bit more room for the drawer on the left hand side. Now the fridge and the table mechanism run on a heavy duty draw runners, and these have caused me no issues over the last couple of years and coped with some fairly decent abuse. Now another great thing about the fridge system from Custom is the cable chain system they use in behind the fridge. The 12 volt socket to power your fridge is hard mounted onto the back of the fridge slide. This is connected via a cable using a, what they call a cable chain system. This keeps the cable up and out of the way of the draw runners, making sure you don't have the chance of any severed cords or jammed runners when you're moving that fridge backwards and forwards. A simple but effective screw-in type 12 volt connection as well means you never have to worry about your fridge coming unplugged and turning off while you're hitting those rough tracks or those corrugations. Now moving over to the passenger side of the vehicle and I just wanted a plain and simple single drawer. 
Now I know that one of the popular options from custom installations is the twin stacked model where you have a deep drawer at the bottom and a much shallower drawer on top. However, it just wasn't for me. I wanted a single big drawer to make sure I could use it for varying different types of gear I was gonna store inside over the next few years. One of the parts of the build that I paid specific attention to were the wing kit infill panels. These and so many builds are often so wasted and it's something that I wanted to make sure I maximized and optimized for easy and convenient access to things that you use on a regular basis. On the left hand side, I'm running a Victron BMV712 battery monitor. This is a Bluetooth monitor that keeps a close eye on both the vehicle's onboard batteries, along with providing important information like voltage, amps, both coming in and out, the watts, the amp hour discharge, and the percentage of charge with the time remaining as well. Not only can I see this easily at the rear of my vehicle, but anywhere around camp with comprehensive Bluetooth app. Underneath, I'm running two standard rocker switches which control roof mounted side lights. One for the left and one for the right, nice and simple. And lastly, I covered my general power management by including four USB ports and two cigarette plugs for general charging and power supply. The right hand side 12 volt plug here is also wired through a voltage converter, which guarantees a higher voltage when the vehicle is switched off. So I can power voltage sensitive equipment like my DJI drone charger, or just pump up the air mattress faster. On the driver's side is my air and water setup. Top and center is the airbag man dual digital gauge, showing me exactly what's in either of my rear suspension airbags at any time. Generally sitting about eight to 10 PSI around town, with the pressure sleeves, these bags can inflate up to 60 PSI if that's really what's required. When I had the caravan, I didn't generally go higher than about 35 PSI to achieve that accurate and predictable handling with the weight attached. Below this, we have the paddle switches that automatically engage a twin ARB compressor and four liter air tank within the side plastics of the vehicle. And lastly, two rocker switches, one of which will turn on the ARB compressor when the ignition is on and the other to power the newly mounted 12 volt water pump and provide that easy access to our onboard water supply. The initial system originally came with two wing pockets for extra storage on either side of the center drawers. These areas, particularly on the Land Cruiser 200 series, open up a huge amount of storage area that is generally unused or hard to use with the wheel arch plastics. Now, given that I had a fair amount of electrical componentry mounted to the face of this drawer and all the cables and wiring were just behind this, I built small dividing brackets just to help protect any of that gear, moving back and striking the back of this panel and damaging those electrical components. On that divider, I also incorporated access to the factory 100 watt and AC inverter. So like I mentioned, there were initially two wing storage areas when I first bought this system. However, as you can see behind me, I've modified that driver's side a fair bit and that section is no longer accessible. However, it is filled with some other gear, which we'll go over in just a moment. Now I can honestly say that I'm very impressed with how the system's held up with almost two years of abuse out on the road. The only two things I've had to do to the system is tighten a few screws on the single draw side that just come loose over some corrugations and also use a little bit of lanolin spray just to lubricate the draw stays that prevent the drawers sliding back in when pulled to full extension. Other than that, these drawers have been hassle and trouble free. Now, after having the system set up for a couple of years now, I found a couple of areas that I thought I could build upon that were just hard to access or create a little bit of an issue with access in this system. Now, a quick warning and disclaimer here, these parts I'm about to talk about were built by me in my garage at home, and I am no carpenter. However, I am happy with how they turned out overall, so let's go check them out. Now, the first area I wanted to work on was the area between the fridge surround box and the rear quarter glass panel window. I just found this area hard to access, and it was being used very inefficiently for its cargo space. So the first thing I did was install an emu wing side access panel. So adding the side emu wing access kit in here really helped with accessing that area. Now, as some of you may have seen from my dedicated review on the emu wing product itself, the installation didn't quite go to plan. However, it still provides awesome access to this area. Now, I've also built a custom storage box that faces this window, which allows me to store some gear in there and some further electronics. Now, again, I've also done a dedicated video on how I went about designing, building, and fitting this box in this area. So check that out, and I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that. But in brief, we have an electrical control panel here that houses a digital water tank flow meter, which allows us to quickly see how much water we've got on the onboard tanks. We also have a remote controller for a 1000 watt inverter, which is mounted behind the fridge just above the cable chain and fridge slide system. And below that we have two 240 volt GPOs. So we can access that 240 volt power and charge our items while they sit inside this box. 
At the top here we have a couple of switches, one of which turns on the interior light for the box so we can see at night, and a second one which turns on power to two torches mounted on the right hand side of the box and charges them up. Also incorporated in this box is a false floor, so removing that we have access to an area that's a little bit harder to get to, but also houses items like tools and equipment that we don't often need on a regular basis. Now building this box did leave a little bit of space around the front, so I'll quickly show you what I've done there. So in that small gap between the storage box and the front of the drawer system here, I just keep a few items like a small hatchet, a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, and also a full repair manual for the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. Now, like I mentioned, the system did come with two original wing kit storage areas. I've still managed to retain that and put a small little false floor in there, which enables sealed access into that area. Mounted underneath that emu wing storage box, we have a Nava fuse block, which powers most of the accessories mounted inside that storage unit. We also have things like a 12 volt water pump and some of the wiring for our inverter as well. Now, although I don't use that for storage, it still comes in handy to keep all of that gear protected from the elements and away from all of our cargo. So after building that custom emu wing storage box, I got a bit of the building bug and wanted to address another issue I found in the rear cargo area of the cruiser, and that was the space above the fridge box surround. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with this space, but when we went camping, we found almost all of our gear would end up on top of this left-hand drawer here, and the space up here was a little bit wasted, only because items would move around, they'd slide either left or right, and just make a bit of a mess of the cargo area. So what I wanted to do was build a custom kitchen or pantry box that would safely secure not only our two new induction cooktops, but all of our cooking gear that can permanently stay in the car for convenient access. So starting from scratch, I built a new fridge surround. I reduced the clearance between the fridge and the surround and added some height on the sides and designed a sliding wooden tray to lock in two Westinghouse induction cooktops and their cables. This with a wedged type design is solid, having to ensure it doesn't move, I installed a little elastic tab to lock it into place. I had some spare room on the side, so I built a long narrow drawer which was just built to hold cutlery, utensils and the like. This is just accessed with a small black pull ring locking handle, and above that is what I designed to be the kitchen drawer. The drawer is slightly recessed back to allow the unit to clear the top tailgate when it's closed, and is only designed with one side. This means it can be easily accessed given its height. The drawer runs on the same designed cup drawer runners as used by the custom units. Now I'll link a lot of the descriptions I used in this build in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. But one thing I will quickly note is that the company I bought these drawer runners off for the kitchen drawer refused to sell them with only one locking tab like I have shown here. So in order to get that system to work I had to get the grinder out, modify those slides and allow for the other side just to be a simple straight back and forth slide with no locking mechanism. Now I understand that having both sides locking out prevent any side to side movement within the drawer or the runners, however after using this type of system in all of these three slides down the bottom from custom over the last couple of years, and without any failure I'm still happy to run it as I've got it mounted up there. So this kitchen drawer has come in very very handy. It manages to hold all of our cups, plates, bowls, jet boil, coffee, tea, sugar, dishwashing liquid, knives, wraps, whatever we have kitchen wise, it all fits in there, including a new pot and pan set as well. Although it may be high, I'm still able to see inside and also once you know where things are, it's easy enough to access. Now on the front of the drawer system, I've also mounted a folding saw, saw and this is just a Velcroed on for easy access while out on the tracks as well. So that stuff stays up, out of the way and nice and secured. Now continuing on with the idea and my initial goal of this system being universal, this whole fridge box surround and everything involved with it can be undone by undoing a couple of screws that screw into the emu and storage box and then the same four catches that hold this unit down to the original drawer system. So in about under 10 minutes I'm able to get this whole system out of the vehicle and still replace it with that false floor enabling me to have a very universal system cargo area for all of our needs as we move forward. So coming back to the 1000 watt inverter mounted behind the fridge on the back of the slide. Now this here, as I mentioned, has a pass through extension cable that powers the permanently mounted GPO outlets in the emu wing storage box. However, what I found is that I also wanted to have some access to 240 volt power inside the cab as well. So what I've done is added on an additional four port power board that can be brought into the cab of the car through the center console armrest in the rear seats. This enables us to have power inside the back of the vehicle, whether or not to charge camera batteries or some device that we're using at the time, but it can also mean that the power board can be taped up or Velcroed onto the back of the fridge surround, depending on the type of power requirement you need. 
Now what I have been using the system for is to charge our Blue Eddy power stations up. Plugging the AC power brick in and tucking it in behind the rear seats enables us to charge up our large lithium power stations while we're out on the road. Now it goes without saying, having availability to six 240 volt GPOs throughout the vehicle, it is important that I keep an eye on how much power we're drawing to make sure I don't overload that 1000 watt maximum. However, I do have that remote display inside the e-moving storage box, so it's nice and easy to keep an eye on it. So this brings us onto lighting in the rear cargo area of the cruiser. Now the factory lighting is way down the front and it's not gonna be of any use now with all these additional modifications. However, what I've done here is installed a single LED to the small blanking panel on the upper tailgate section. This system here is wired directly into the rear push button or the electronic folding tailgate function, which means it sources power off the door sensor. This also means that as you close the door, this light automatically turns off and as you open it, it automatically turns on again. It also comes with an inbuilt switch as well, so pressing that, you can turn the light off at any time as well. This light here has come in incredibly handy. Not only does it light up inside the kitchen drawer, the fridge, the tailgate, but also the table and the whole setup around the rear of the cruiser. It's something that is used without fail every single time we go away and hit the tracks. Now, like I touched on earlier, we do also have an onboard water tank in the Land Cruiser. So we have a tap here mounted to the end of the tire swing away carrier, which I've spoken about in detail in another video, so I'll make sure I link that in the description below and up in this top corner here. But this tap here is fed from a 55 litre stainless steel water tank underneath the cruiser and is activated by just flicking a switch on the back of the drawer system. This means that whether or not we're set up with a full camping kitchen setup or just on the side of the road, it's incredibly easy and convenient to access our onboard water supply. So moving on to the last and probably the most overlooked storage area of the Land Cruiser 200 series, which is this tailgate pocket storage. Now on the Australian 200 series, we generally get a factory toolkit in the right hand side and this left hand one is completely empty. So what I've gone and done is picked up some custom pick foam and I've put in some handy and commonly used items into this area here. Having the foam means I can put in and fit in exactly what I want or where I want it and it's nice and secured, it won't rattle around and nothing here will get damaged. So in the left hand side here, I have my ARB tire inflator, a manual hand pump, which is a backup for the suspension airbags, ARB air deflator, an air pressure gauge, a locking nut for my wheels and a 21 mil socket to go along with that locking nut. So here I have all of my air up and air down tools. So when I'm hitting the tracks, I can very quickly and easily get access to all of this, regardless of how stacked up and packed up the back cargo area is or how messy and unorganized that left hand drawer is. Now in addition to that, I've also taken out the factory toolkit as it's no longer needed in my circumstance. Having the tire mounted on a tire carrier, I don't need the poles and extensions to drop it down from underneath the cargo area, and I carry out my own tools anyway. So opening up this section here, I have a set of basic tools that you might need on a common basis. This is just gonna prevent you having to search around in through your main toolkit to find something like a 10 mil spanner or a socket set. So in here, I have an eight, 10, 12, and 14 mil ratcheting ring spanner. I have a quarter inch ratchet with two extensions and an eight, 10, 12, 14 mil socket. Also have a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver and a five mil Allen key, which just comes in really handy with some of the accessories that I mount up on my roof rack. All of this tucks away very nicely, doesn't rattle around, and none of it's gonna get damaged or move around while we're out on some of those harder tracks. So there we have it guys, that is the rear cargo setup in my Land Cruiser 200 series and it's been working very very well for me and my family whether or not it's just for an overnighter or for a week away on the tracks. Now I know there'll be some questions about some of the products I've used in the video so I'll link a few of them in the description below for some of the more popular products but if you have any questions or queries make sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope this video was helpful and informative and hopefully it gave you some ideas that you might be able to take away and use on your own touring vehicle, whether or not it be a wagon setup like this or any other type of setup. But thanks for watching all the way to the end, guys. I appreciate it and we'll make sure we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.